Hello and welcome to Kerry Systems Introduction to the Intelliprox Blue, or IP Blue for short. The IP Blue is Kerry Systems latest Bluetooth hardware offering. The IP Blue controller is designed as a one door controller. The database resides on the controller and all door functions are controlled by the controller's onboard microprocessor. No PC is required. Multiple IP Blue controllers can be installed in the same system, but each is independently programmed and connects to the IP Blue app one controller at a time. A login, username, and password is used to control who can connect to the controller via the app. The IP Blue app is available from the Google Play Store for Android devices and the App Store for Apple mobile devices. The app is free as well as all future updates. No licensing is required to download or install the app. It ticks the following boxes. It's inexpensive. Prices are very competitive. Easy to use. It's been tested on fathers, mothers, wives, girlfriends, husbands and boyfriends. We're happy to report it is 100% argument free. Bluetooth 4.0. The range of Bluetooth 4.0 low energy can be up to 100 meters or 330 feet outdoors line of sight with a maximum data exchange rate of 1 megabit per second. Your actual data rate and distance may be less depending on the mobile device and environment. No software required. You can add cards by just pressing a button or they can be added via the app this means no computer is required or Windows installation necessary. In and out readers using Kerry NXT 485 readers that can now also read most HID 125 kHz cards. For out readers, simply order an NXT 3RE or an NXT 5RE. E stands for exit. Anti passback with three settings on, soft, or hard. Exportable database can be moved from controller to controller easily. Events, 2,500 event capacity buffer that can be exported to a CSV. 250 card holder capacity. Let's take a look at the IP Blue and I'll give you a few of the elements present on the board. As you can see, it's quite small. 10 centimeters, that's four inches, by six centimeters, three inches, including terminal blocks. 12 volt DC with readers, it draws 800 milliamp. So with the PSU that can be provided, we will leave one amp available for the electric strike lock or mag lock. You may have noticed it's the same form factor as the neutron. Therefore, the IP blue controller shares the same enclosure. The enclosure is plastic, so it doesn't reduce the Bluetooth range. Note, do not install the IP Blue controller into a metal enclosure. Doing so may cause a failure to connect to the mobile device via Bluetooth for programming, manual door control, or event retrieval. Now we've mentioned that this is Bluetooth, and you can use it with an app, but you don't have to. Card holder and credential enrollment can be done in two ways. Manually entering the card data or via presentation enrollment at the reader. There is a quick enrollment button on the controller. Press and hold for two seconds, then you can present up to 250 cards at the reader. Then press and hold for two seconds to come out of enrollment mode. The reader will flash indicating you're in enrollment mode and the LED highlighted on the clip will also flash. Here is the 485 reader terminal. Like our NXT controllers and Neutron, we can have more than one reader in the same terminal. Working down next is our RTE. This is a normally open input only. Now the door contact. The door contact input is normally closed only. And finally, the lock relay. The lock relay is a Form C relay, so it has normally open, common, and normally closed poles. The lock relay can be used to control fail-safe or fail-secure locking devices. Note. 
Locks up to one amp of current draw can be powered by the controller's 1.8 amp PSU. Higher current draw devices must use a separate lock power supply. Only switch the positive voltage through the relay. Also, you must install the enclosed transorbs across the lock input wires as close to the lock as possible to prevent voltage feedback damage to the controller. Let's have a look at the app. The login page. Username is admin and the password is pass. The default login can and should be changed after initial programming. As you can see, we've kept the icons consistent with doors.net. This makes it easier for existing customers to navigate the app and the new customers who could go on to use doors.net in the future. Let's connect to the controller and go through some of the features. Hardware setup, then connect to our device. Now we're connected, we can go into its settings. We have 10 pun lock. If you've forgotten your card or fob and are in Bluetooth range of the controller, you'll be able to let yourself in. Auto unlock schedule. As you can see, it's very simple to set and then turn on. Set time and date. This can be auto from your device or you can specify it manually. Single or paired reader. As you can see, mine is set to two readers, as I have a 3R and a 3RE wired onto the same bus. Here we can set the door contact alarm. Strike time is how long the door will remain unlocked on an access granted. Door held open. This is the time the door can remain ajar before a door held open event message is generated in the event log. Note there is no alarm relay output for an IP Blue controller. Then finally, anti passback. As you can see, we have three settings available. Soft will let you in but show a different event, and hard will lock you out until your you egress out of the other paired reader. From here, we can go into time profiles. Simply press the button, name the schedule, then set up each day as you require, followed by save. As you can see, you're able to set two intervals for one day. Back to card holders, we can add a card to the IPLE Blue in three ways. By the enrollment button, manually entering the card, and presentation enrollment. Then you set the time profile. We can now check the events. Every single event the controller has received will be viewable here to a capacity of 2,500 events. After that, it becomes FIFO. That's first in, first out. You can use transaction reports and can customize a report, then export the report for your convenience. Also, you can use alerts, which unlike events, can be broken down to see what we deem as potentially system critical events. Backup and restore. We can back up a database onto the administrative device. The data can then be restored onto a replacement controller or onto a controller at another door, assuming the programming applies to the second door. The controller firmware is upgradable from the app too, and the firmware is available from the cloud, as seen here. Tech support. Here we have a useful link to the context page for pictorial instructions.
System Options. This is for the app settings. Users, App Password and Language. Finally, we have the About tab with more useful links. Thank you for watching.